on Winona, Minnesota, U.A. Winona, Minnesota, a musical name for a thriving city on the upper Mississippi, a city born of the lumbering days when the sound of the sawmill filled this scenic valley. A city which augmented its natural transportation advantages with railroads, building a prosperity which today reflects the enterprise of its citizens. Today, the businesses and residences of Winona's 26,000 people spread over 10 square miles of the Hiawatha Valley. Winona is a center of commerce for 120,000 persons living within a radius of 40 miles. Since the lumbering boom of 50 years ago, business in Winona has expanded in many different fields. Until today, its economy is firmly supported by 82 diversified industries and more than 500 trade and service establishments. Cultural growth of the city has kept pace. There are 27 churches, among them the picturesque St. Stanislaus, a vigorous library, well-equipped YMCA and YWCA, three colleges, four motion picture theaters, an outdoor theater, and plentiful parks and playgrounds. One of the city's landmarks is Sugar Loaf, a rock formation formed by quarrying operations. Winona has the advantage of inexpensive water freight for bulky shipments. Locks and dams control the Mississippi for navigation. Winona lies on the most scenic highway route between the Twin Cities and Chicago and is an advantageous spot for motorists from Wisconsin to cross the Mississippi and connect with this attractive route. Highways 14 and 61 combined are routed through Winona and offer direct routes to the larger cities of the upper Mississippi Valley. <laughs> Travelers by rail find Winona an easy place to get to. Five major railroads serve this friendly city, scheduling 28 passenger trains daily. 22 of these trains are deluxe high-speed streamliners. Winona is only 112 miles from the Twin Cities, 312 miles from Chicago. Winona's excellent transportation facilities have been an important factor in the city's industrial expansion. 28 companies have established plants in Winona since 1940. 14 have located there since 1947. The Winona Industrial Development Association, a non-profit organization, works closely with the Association of Commerce and city officials in fostering industrial relocation and expansion, which will bring new payrolls into the city. Winona can confidently expect future growth, for it offers modern business and shopping facilities, attractive home and industrial sites, and ample outlets for cultural growth and recreation. Boating is a favorite pastime for Winona residents, grown-ups and those not quite grown up. Boats of all sizes ply the waters of the Mississippi and of Lake Winona. A pleasure boat harbor for cabin cruisers and other small boats is easily accessible from the main channel. From a speedboat owned by Ed Hostetler of the Sunbeam Bakery, we see some of the scenes which give Winona residents a panorama of ever-changing beauty, season after season. recorded visitor to Winona came up the river in 1805 when Lieutenant Pike journeyed from St. Louis to make a treaty with the Indians and pick a site for an army fort. The Wapashaw Band of Sioux Indians then lived between the river and Lake Winona. The city eventually was named for Winona, a beautiful Indian princess of the tribe. 
Today, white men enjoy hunting and fishing on the same ground sought out by the Indians. There is excellent duck hunting within half an hour's drive from downtown Winona. Deer and pheasants abound. Rivers, lakes, and streams offer the finest fishing in the state for walleye and northern pike, trout, bass, and sunfish. There are many square miles of pools and backwater areas remote from the channel which carries river commerce. A city as large as Winona requires a lot of bread, and some of the highest quality comes from the ovens of the Federal Bakery. Huge rotary ovens are capable of baking 3,000 pounds of bread in less than 30 minutes. Conveyor belts carry bread from the ovens to other departments. Rolls are baked in a similar type of oven, and after cooling are carried on conveyor belts to be sliced, wrapped, and packed. Sunbeam bread and rolls are handled by machine, except for those few operations where the human touch is necessary. When the pure ingredients have been weighed and measured, a giant dough mixer takes over. It can handle 500 pounds of bread dough in a batch, mixing it in 15 to 18 minutes. The dough then goes into a trough and is hoisted up to be emptied into the divider. Automatically, the dough is divided into pieces of exact size, weight, and texture. These pieces then pass over another belt and are formed into round balls. The dough is permitted to relax for approximately 12 minutes before kneading. It is kneaded in two directions, flattened, rolled into loaves, and dropped into a waiting pan, ready for the oven. Now we take another look at the rolls we saw coming out of the ovens. Here, they are on their way to be sliced and wrapped. The entire operation is automatic, needing only an occasional guiding touch from the attendant. Sunbeam recently received an award for high sanitation competing with 110 other bakeries for recognition from the Quality Bakers of America. Hot metal plates in these machines seal cellophane wrappings on the packages of buns, sealing in the oven-baked freshness until the moment the package is opened sealing in the goodness of sunbeam baked goods. Different machines are needed, of course, for proper handling of loaves of fresh baked bread. When it comes from the oven, bread is cooled to a temperature of 95 or 100 degrees before handling. Then, it is automatically cut into convenient slices, and the familiar wax paper wrapper is quickly folded around it, sealing in the flavor.
This system of handling bread in tubes was introduced by the Sunbeam Bakers. Many other brands do not yet have the benefit of this kind of careful handling. The sturdy tube protects the bread during handling and shipping, ensuring a better product on the grocer's shelves. The Federal Bakery is an independently owned Winona enterprise which affords employment to 135 men and women. Among them is driver Ehlers, who handles one of the routes which distributes Sunbeam products through a geographical area of about 6,000 square miles. That means a lot of people reach for Sunbeam. It must be good. About 250 families in the Winona area belong to the Winona Country Club, enjoying its facilities for dinners, picnics, wedding receptions, dances, and weekly lunches, as well as superb golf. L.W. Torgerson tees off on the course which was laid out by the club's first pro, Ben Knight of Scotland. It is acknowledged as a challenging course, and golfers new to the club find the 35-36 par difficult to achieve. Putting, it appears, is not much easier than par. President of the Winona Country Club, L.C. Landman, tees off with a party which includes Laird Lucas, Ray Bambanek, and Bill Wainwright. The Winona course is arranged with alternate greens, so the nine fairways may be played as 18 holes. The Scots designer of the Winona Club course also laid out courses in El Chura and Galesville. Every kind of business is represented at the Winona Country Club, and most business houses maintain a membership. One of the long-established businesses in Winona is the Winona Milk Company, which has been serving families in the area for 40 years. Milk from healthy herds is delivered fresh from the farm and is weighed and sampled as it arrives. Purity of the milk is guarded carefully. Machine equipment is the finest available, and the highest sanitation is maintained under supervision of both city and state dairy inspectors. After being weighed, milk flows through sterile stainless steel tubes into storage tanks. Some is set aside to become ice cream and other manufactured dairy products. The remainder goes to the pasteurizing equipment. Here, a worker checks the process of homogenization, the technique that distributes the cream and its good rich flavor through every drop of homogenized milk. In the background, we can see the cooler. Accurate temperature control is vital in maintaining a grade A product. This machine sterilizes the milk bottles, washing them with high temperature steam and high pressure jets of scalding water. Another machine automatically fills the shining clean bottles with milk and seals them to maintain purity in the fresh, wholesome taste. The versatile dairy also maintains modern facilities for packaging milk and sanitary paper cartons. This machine opens the cartons and applies a heavy coat of hot wax to the interior to make sure the carton will be sanitary and will not leak after the wax cools. The cartons are automatically filled, crimped, and stapled. Here are cartons of cool, fresh milk, ready for delivery to customers of the Winona Milk Company. The dairy serves more than 3,000 families and 200 stores and restaurants. The Winona Milk Company operates 10 routes and uses 15 delivery units including refrigerated trucks for milk routes and units which maintain below zero temperature for ice cream routes. 
Year-round, about 30 people are employed by this modern dairy, which combines new methods and equipment with constant watchfulness to give Winona the finest dairy products. In the mood for a swim are Neil Fredrickson, William Borth, Paul Homan, Bob Wagner, and Dick Galebrenner. At the Winona YMCA, they have enviable facilities. They pick up towels and keys from a friendly clerk at the desk and are soon in the water. These youngsters will grow up knowing that healthy physical development makes life more fun. The YMCA also offers gym equipment, club room facilities, and many supervised programs. A fine YWCA gives girls the same opportunities, and the Catholic Recreation Center plans a well-rounded program for young people. Many other clubs and playgrounds give young Winona citizens a healthy outlet for their abounding energy. Winona products are known all over the world, and products of the H. Barron's Manufacturing Company have helped build that reputation. Pat Reck shows us two items. Metal for these items arrives by truck. Sides of the buckets are cut out of flat metal stock by this machine called a blanking press. Pails are the principal product of the Barron's Manufacturing Company. Bottoms of the pails are cut out in a similar manner. Tin plate is used for most of these products since it will not contaminate the contents of the bucket. Sides of the bucket are rolled to give them a curve. Then the sides are fastened together by a lock seaming machine. The seam adds strength as well as making a leak proof seal. A heavy reinforcing wire is incorporated into the top rim of all Baron's buckets. Then this beading machine forms the bottoms to fit the side walls. And a spinner fastens the bottoms to the rest of the pail. This is the standard method of making round containers of all kinds. Ears are riveted on the pail to hold the wire bale or handle. Two rivets hold each ear. Final step is soldering of the various parts and seams to make them smooth and sanitary. The shop employs 80 Winona men and women and produces more than 100 different sizes and shapes of metalware. One of the specialties of the Barron's Manufacturing Company is a miniature dairy pail, which has outdistanced all its competition with sales of three and one half million in the last two years. The precision-made miniature pail has been shipped all over the United States and into foreign countries. Managing the Barron's Manufacturing Company are Paul Schneider, President and Owner, and his brother, B.A. Schneider, Secretary Treasurer. Under their enterprising leadership, the company will soon celebrate its 50th anniversary as a contributor to Winona's economy. Winona has three highly rated colleges fully accredited in their fields and granting four-year degrees which are accepted by any college or university in this country. Winona State Teachers College also grants a master's degree in education. Primary aim of the Teachers College is the preparation of teachers for the Minnesota public schools. Its graduates are qualified to teach in any state. This class, taught by Dr. Rudolph Logansgaard, is studying methods of teaching mathematics. The college provides courses which fit its graduates for other vocations, as well as teaching and a curriculum broad enough to encourage personal development and growth in community living.
With the opening of its handsome new Memorial Hall, Winona State Teachers College gained modern facilities for preparing teachers of physical education. Luther McCown, athletic director, is instructing this class. The new building contains a large pool and gymnasium, well-planned classroom space, a student exchange, and an attractive social room. Winona also has the largest residential college for women in Minnesota, the College of St. Teresa, which occupies a beautiful 100-acre campus. Among its noteworthy architectural features is the Chapel of St. Mary of the Angels, whose mosaics and stained glass windows combine the modern with early Christian art. Conducted by the Sisters of the Third Order of St. Francis, of the Congregation of Our Lady of Lourdes, the college is intended to educate women whose fulfillment of vocations in the religious life, in marriage or the single life, bears witness to their faith. History of the school goes back to 1894. First classes on a college level were opened in 1909. President since 1942 is Sister Mary Camille Bow, who heads a faculty of 71 teachers and takes time from her administrative duties to teach a class in French. Like the two other colleges in Winona, St. Teresa's has an enrollment between five and 600. Nearly all the students at the Women's College live on campus. One of the busiest academic buildings is St. Cecilia Hall, which contains concert rooms, practice rooms, and teaching studios. Alverna Hall is a residence for the religious faculty. Forty teachers are sisters of the Third Order of St. Francis. The statue of the saint stands in Alverna Court. Alverna Hall and Lourdes Hall, a residence for students, are built in Italian classical tradition. Lourdes Hall is a particularly fine example of beauty and simplicity. An unusually fine building stone is found near Winona. Stanley Wicca and Briggs Wheatley use a pneumatic drill at the quarry of the Bizans Cut Stone Company. Stone from this quarry is a dense dolomitic limestone known as travertine, which is closely akin to the stone used in St. Peter's Cathedral in Rome. There are only two or three deposits of travertine in this country, and it is much in demand. The mobile crane, shown loading stone, was specially designed for use in the Bizans quarry. Since Winona travertine stone is frost-proof and low in absorption, it is very durable. Travertine was used in buildings at Yale University, the University of Wisconsin, Trinity Lutheran Church in Rochester, and the Cathedral of the Sacred Heart in Winona. At the mill, rough blocks brought from the quarry are unloaded by an overhead travel crane. The crane operator, Henry Palbicki, is supervised by K.J. Walsh, plant manager of the Bizans Cutstone Company, as the stone is brought inside the mill and stack. A jointing machine is loaded by Edward Grandel on the left and Edward Bath on the right. Saws used to cut stone in the Bizan's mill cost as much as $2,500 and run up to five feet in diameter. This machine uses a 36-inch diamond edge saw. Edward Craig checks a piece of stone as it passes through a carborundum rotary planer. A stone splitter at the Bizan's mill bites off eight-inch sawed slabs into veneer stone. This type of stone is used extensively for benches, window boxes, stone fronts on homes, and other conventional stone adaptations. C.J. Bizans, 
president of the company, feels it is probably the best known product of the Bazan Stone Company. Third liberal arts college in Winona is St. Mary's College, home of the Red Men. A ranch-type building, Aquinas Hall is the newest men's residence and includes comfortable lounges as well as rooms for 60 students. For its first 20 years, the college was conducted by clergy of the Winona Diocese. Since 1933, it has been under control of the Brothers of the Christian Schools. Like St. Teresa's, St. Mary's is essentially a boarding school. 90% of its students make their home away from home in rooms like this. St. Mary's is dedicated to stimulating the development of its students so that their whole personality will become progressively better integrated. St. Mary's Hall houses classrooms and administrative offices. Heffron Hall contains offices and meeting rooms and accommodates 200 students. St. Joseph's Hall is a residence for 80 young men who are in the process of joining the Christian Brothers Order. Gymnasium facilities help balance their daily life. Liberal arts students enjoy participation in a wide variety of sports. Nearly all religious denominations are represented in Winona. According to one survey, 52% of the church population is Protestant and 48% Catholic. There are seven parochial schools, including a Catholic high school. A progressive public school program is administered from eight new buildings constructed since 1925. Latest addition to the elementary system is Lincoln School, of which Charles F. Beckman is principal. Among the recreation available to citizens of Winona is horsemanship through the facilities of the Saddle and Bridle Club. Excellent horses are available, and Tom Kidd offers riding instruction to those who wish to improve their skill or their style. One of the most pleasant activities of the Saddle and Bridle Club is a weekly breakfast ride on Sunday mornings. These young people are on their way to the club's picnic grounds. This sort of wholesome activity reflects the atmosphere of Winona, a friendly atmosphere that makes Winona a good place to live. The airport is on a flying service which offers instruction, air taxi, and crop dusting services. A student, Dick Kapuzman, is checking out in Aranka under supervision of Ralph W. Drake before Kapuzman starts a solo cross-country flight. To qualify for a private license, a student must take 15 hours of dual instruction, five of them cross-country. He must follow this with 25 hours of solo flight, 10 of which are cross-country. Kapuzman taxis onto the runway and demonstrates a takeoff and landing. <laughs> William Reinerts of Novello Art Glass is about to hail a taxi, an air taxi for a business trip. More and more businessmen are learning the time-saving possible with this quick transportation. 
Air taxi planes average 120 to 160 miles an hour. Travel in them is about 25 times as safe as private auto. Pilot Len Susmith arrives from a trip as Drake leaves. The two pilots, whose flying hours total 20 years, and two planes are ready for day or night taxi calls anywhere. Ralph Drake loads his bug duster with insecticide before taking off to combat the destructive pests in a nearby field. Crop dusting is difficult and exacting for the pilot, but is a boon to the farmer since it thoroughly covers large areas in a short time and does no mechanical damage to growing crops. Drake has traveled as far as the Montana border on crop dusting assignments. The actual flying calls for the most delicate maneuvering and requires the kind of expert flying available from the Winona Flying Service. The Winona Daily News, Circulation 21,000, has just moved into a handsome new building designed by the publisher and staff. By careful planning, the move was accomplished without having to suspend publication for even one edition. The Daily News is served by leased wires, giving it instantaneous coverage all over the world. It has the new teletypesetter equipment. Its telegraph stories arrive on a tape already punched to operate typesetting machines and automatically spaced into lines one column wide. This speeds the editing process appreciably. Betty Elliott collects the latest news copy and telephoto pictures and calls them to the attention of Managing Editor Bill Cole. The Managing Editor makes the final decision on which stories are to be used and which discarded. In the composing room, Russell Mayer checks teletype centered tape corresponding to the stories approved by the editors, then inserts the tape in the linotype machine. Somewhat like a player piano, the machine follows the perforations and sets the story into type. When the whole story has been set, the type is inked and a proof is made. Bob Osmond pulls a galley proof to be read for typographical errors. When all the day's stories are assembled into pages, they are recast into semicircular plates, which will fit cylinders on the rotary press. This modern press can print 25,000 papers of 24 pages each in one hour. The press not only prints, cuts, assembles, and folds the papers, it also projects every 50th copy to save counting time. Circulation manager A.J. Kikebush takes a look at the latest hot off the press. Much of the daily news readership is in outlying areas, and advertisers use the paper to reach both rural and urban markets. Papers for out-of-town carriers are bundled and shipped by Daily News truck. This machine automatically ties the bundles. Daily News employees enjoy air conditioning, efficient lighting, and a kitchen and lunchroom in the building. When the trucks are loaded, another edition of the Winona Daily News is on its way to keep the whole Winona area up to date. New ideas in the field of earth moving equipment are being put on paper in the design and drafting department of the Badger Machine Company. D.F. Shabilsky, president and general manager of Badger, looks over a new design with Henry D. Hull, assistant general manager, and George Schneider, chief engineer. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Shabilsky is the inventor and designer of the Hopto Digger, one of Badger's principal products. This Hopto, mounted on a truck, demonstrates its ability to brace itself, dig in, and dump. The Hopto is used in ditching, construction, and other earth-moving applications throughout the United States and internationally. Much of the heavy metal cutting in the Badger plant is done on heavy-duty acetylene cutters. Cutting nozzles apply a burning mixture of oxygen and acetylene gas, which cut the metal by oxidizing it. Gears, sprockets, and pulleys are turned on an engine lathe. Apprentices must spend four years learning to operate this equipment. Operator Vince Zinkowski has been with Badger since 1949. The turret lathe will take bar stock up to six inches in diameter. It operates on a 25 horsepower motor and uses a combination of alternating and direct current to manage its various controls. Operator is LaVarn Santi. Frames of the Hopto are welded out of 3 8 inch steel plate with this equipment. This metal is six times as thick as most sheet steel used in automobiles. After the frame is completed, the power unit is located on it. These men are handling the power unit with the aid of an overhead hoist. After the Hopto digger is assembled and checked by inspectors and engineers, it is shipped in knockdown form to dealers or sometimes direct to the ultimate user. Sales manager of Badger Machine, V.S. Shugart, shows a client how far flung Badger customers are. Badger has helped win and hold Winona's national and foreign markets. Winona's sunset crowd and their mothers are fortunate in having facilities for swimming and bathing within a few minutes walk from downtown. Lake Park on the shores of Lake Winona offers swimming supervised by lifeguards and is roomy enough to accommodate its usual attendance of 250 without crowding. Parks and Recreation Director Mike Bembenek has won many friends by his development of Lake Park. Waters are stocked with bluegills and crappies to maintain good pan fishing. A structure of particular architectural interest in Winona is the Merchants National Bank, designed by the famed architect Louis Sullivan. The bank is community owned. Many of its depositors are stockholders. Grant Burley of the Culligan Soft Water Service stops in to make a deposit in the firm's checking account. The Merchants National Bank, being an enterprising financial institution, extends courteous service to all customers. This depositor in the savings department is Jan Ehlers, who receives some assistance from her mother, Mrs. A. R. Ehlers. Safekeeping of valuables is an important part of a bank's operation if it is truly a service to the community. Dolores Malcheski attends to some business in the safety deposit vault and is assisted by Nadine Smith of the bank staff. Good management, sound advice, and the resources of a friendly bank can often make money matters run more smoothly. R. M. Tolleson, Vice President and Trust Officer of the Merchants National Bank, gives his opinion on a financial problem to J. A. Kirchner. 
Mr. Kirchner has wisely consulted the man in the best position to be helpful, his banker. One of Winona's proudest possessions is its hospital, a gift to the community from a group of generous families. Established 59 years ago, Winona General Hospital offers fine, modern facilities and excellent patient care. Service to patients begins when they enter the hospital and are greeted with kindness and reassurance. This office, like the rest of the hospital, is on 24-hour schedule. The hospital has 110 beds and 20 bassinets. Facilities of Winona General Hospital serve more than 25 communities in Minnesota and 10 in Wisconsin. Nearly 2,000 operations have been performed in this hospital this year. These nurses are preparing for an emergency appendectomy, an emergency which can be met easily with top-notch equipment. In the X-ray room at Winona General, more than 3,000 patients have received X-ray examinations and nearly 400 have been given X-ray treatments upon prescription of their doctors. More than 300 meals a day are served from the hospital's dietary department, including 25 varieties of special diets. Patients not on special diets enjoy the same fare as doctors and visitors. Remodeling and refurnishing of the kitchen was completed in April of last year as a gift of the Winona General Hospital Women's Auxiliary. Being a nonprofit institution, Winona General makes its charge to patients cover only the actual cost of their care. For remodeling and new equipment, the hospital depends upon members of the community who own, benefit from, and depend upon the hospital. If there's one predicament a girl dislikes, it's having to put chains on a car. This girl, however, has help in a product of the Peerless Chain Company of Winona. Plastic protectors are packed with each set of Peerless Quick-On Rod chains, which are designed to be applied or removed in less than a minute without moving the car, without using a jack, and without crawling around underneath. Grace Laska, who knows the advantages of quick-on chains because she works for Peerless, is demonstrating. Sportsmen, doctors, salesmen, anyone who encounters unfavorable road conditions will find these simple modern chains will save many a frayed cuff and many a frayed temper. Peerless makes tire chains for all kinds of motor vehicles, and a wide variety of other chain products, enough to crowd a 60-page catalog and amaze you with the ways chain can contribute to better efficiency and to better living. Chain is fire hardened to add strength. Here, a shot of chain is unloaded from a case hardening furnace. Chain treated in this manner is used for many tire chains, including the quick on. A first step in making chain is this oval forming machine which bends wire stock into links. After the links are formed, the chain is sent to welding machines. 
Automatic welding machines can weld many kinds of chain with no attention from an operator, except adjustments for size and shape. The finished chain may be hardened, plated, or otherwise treated to add strength. Products of the Peerless Chain Company include many wire shapes and welded and weldless chain. Here is a lock link sprocket chain. At the top is a weldless chain for playground equipment. In the center, a type of welded chain which has been in use nearly as long as the wheel. Planning promotion of the newest type of tire chain, the Quick On, RDC Bambenick, president, his son, Ray, sales manager, and a brother, A.J. Bambenick. Peerless chain products are excellent representatives of Winona industry. The city administration of Winona operates from this handsome building. It's city council time. William P. Thoyer, president of the city council, calls the meeting to order. A mayor and nine aldermen make governmental decisions for the city of Winona, handling the many affairs that concern a growing city of 26,000 population, the county seat, and center of an extensive trading area. Residents of Winona stem from English, Irish, Polish, Scandinavian, and German origins. They are 97% American-born. Serving Winona's citizens and businesses, the city maintains 75 miles of streets, including 60 miles of hard surfacing, a sewage disposal plant, a water system which pumps more than three and a half million gallons daily, a fire department with 41 men, and a police department with 34 men, a city-directed playground program, and other activities appropriate for the health, safety, and well-being of the people of Winona. The city's income from taxes is a little over $2 million a year. This income is based on property assessed at more than $12 million a year on the basis of 40% of its true and uninflated value. The Winona Fire Department has three stations. As we watch, Chief Frank P. Witt gets a fire alarm on the board. Winona's fire department has 41 full-time professional firefighters. The chief leads the way. Firemen and equipment are right after him. The department has eight major pieces of firefighting equipment. supervision. The hook and ladder, exciting to watch, indispensable in fighting fires in office buildings or other tall structures. Winona police help control traffic and pedestrians at the scene of a fire. The Winona Police Department is modern and well-equipped. It includes 34 trained peace officers and six pieces of motor equipment. Winona Police are completely radio-equipped. Captain Albert Teal operates the KAB 277 radio. Winona police have statewide radio coverage. 
in direct contact with Rochester and La Crosse police. Their equipment enables them to contact any police network in the country. Chief A.J. Bingold supervises the various police functions, which include a complete crime lab, a modern jail with separate quarters for men and women, radio cars, motorcycles, a rescue boat, and police ambulance. A firing range enables officers to maintain and improve their marksmanship. equipment strengthens the long arm of the law, men who maintain the peace and security of Winona have the advantage of some of the newest and best tools devised by police science. Midwest Motors, the only authorized Oldsmobile sales and service agency in Winona, has been doing business in the city for 22 years. All the benefit of this long experience goes into their handling of new and used car sales. Salesman J.W. Kopp shows a potential buyer one of the many safety-tested used cars featured by Midwest Motors. This Oldsmobile is capable of a lot of useful miles. Its safety and dependability are the result of Midwest Motors' policy and know-how of automobiles. Williams of Winona, a salesman for Brown Bigelow of St. Paul, is about to become the proud owner of a new Oldsmobile. Salesman Cop completes the arrangements. service is an important part of Midwest Motors operation. Battery charging is an important service from the customer standpoint and a fascinating one from this girl's viewpoint. The exhaust analyzer locates engine trouble quickly, avoiding endless guesswork. Mechanic Dan Delano uses the complex machine. New Oldsmobiles are checked carefully in the shop before they are delivered to the customer. Mechanic Adam Cratch is repacking a wheel, renewing the lubrication, while Gene Curlin goes over the finish to remove dust and any tiny scratches it may have picked up en route. The Oldsmobile 88 is a car to gladden the heart of any young lady or any lady young in heart. It's on display at Midwest Motors in Winona. There's something going on at the Y tonight. Junior High Dance and Splash Party. It's the Money Hop. When 
Winona is keenly interested in its young people offering more facilities for their health, education, and welfare than many cities ten times as large. Well, it's hot work, but there's relief ahead. Water seems especially fine after a workout like these youngsters have just had. Young people are privileged to be growing up in a city like Winona, which provides many wholesome ways to have fun and develop a well-rounded personality. A city which recognizes that its future lies in its young people, and the best way to ensure Winona's future as a prosperous and thriving city is to see that the younger generation is a thriving one. are Winona's future leaders. They are fortunate to have such a city, and the city is fortunate to have them. It will be gratifying to watch them grow in our town, Winona, Minnesota, USA.